Hello and welcome to a new series of videos where I shall be going to various places in Australia. Now I have a close association with Australia, I lived there for a while and I also worked for Qantas, the Australian airline, for 32 years. Anyway, time to get to Australia now, it's a long way. The first part of the journey from Heathrow Airport Terminal 5 is with the transit train which takes passengers practically to the aircraft. Luckily I have a comfy seat which converts into a flat bed. It's about 12 and a half hours to the transit stop in Singapore. Time to stretch the legs and get ready for the next sector to Sydney, which is about eight and a half hours. Time for another snooze. These club class suites have sliding doors, which make them very private. It's an early morning arrival in Sydney, so to prevent wandering around until check-in time, I booked the hotel from the night before. I find the public transport in Sydney is very good. The light rail is a tram service. You can use an Opal card or your credit or debit card, tap on the machine before boarding the tram and tap after you get off. You can also tap to access the trains, ferries and bus services throughout Sydney. Sydney was founded on the 26th of January 1788 population is currently over 5 million. The famous Sydney Harbour Bridge is the largest and the heaviest steel arch in the world. It connects Sydney with North Sydney, crossing the harbour at one of the narrowest points. The two halves of architect JJC Bradfield's bridge were built outwards from either side. The official opening of the bridge took place on the 19th of March 1932. The Sydney Opera House is said to have been inspired by billowing sails, orange segments, palm fronds and Mayan temples. It was designed by Danish architect Jorn Utzon. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. It's been likened to nuns in a rugby scrum and the sexual congress of turtles. It's possible to take a one-hour guided tour of the Opera House. To be honest, I was disappointed as for various reasons the tour did not visit many areas. It starts with an impressive audio-visual display. This is the studio which has played host to events ranging from club nights, cabaret and burlesque. It's much better in my opinion to book to see an event in the Opera House. On the doorstep of the Opera House is the wonderful Royal Botanic Garden which was established in 1816 features plant life from Australia and around the world. It was the site of the first vegetable garden in Australia.
Government House is open to the public at certain times and it's the official residence of the Governor of New South Wales. In the gardens itself, the Botanic Gardens restaurant offers good quality food. Located in front of Sydney's oldest hospital is this wild boar. Visitors are encouraged to donate a coin through the boar's open mouth and rub the snout afterwards for good luck. All donations go towards the work of the hospital. St Mary's Cathedral is the cathedral church of the Roman Catholic Diocese and the seat of the Archbishop of Sydney. I'm in Hyde Park in the centre of Sydney. It's the oldest public parkland in Australia and it was named after London's Hyde Park. I'm glad to say it hasn't rained today. Fronted by the Pool of Reflection, the Anzac Memorial in Hyde Park commemorates the soldiers of the Australia and New Zealand Army Corps, the Anzacs, who served in World War I. This is Museum Station. It's a heritage listed underground commuter rail station that's located on the City Circle route at the southern end of Hyde Park. Lots of old signs and advertisements. The Queen Victoria building in George Street has nearly 200 shops on five levels. Built in 1898, it was repeatedly slated for demolition until it was restored in the 80s. Sydney Town Hall on George Street was built in 1889 and guided tours are available. This former Docklands area is Darling Harbour. There are plenty of restaurants here to choose from, apart from the pizza restaurant I found that doesn't do pizzas anymore. Walking around the curve of the bay will take you past a fantastic cityscape and through the major redevelopment area of Barangaroo.
This is the El Alamein fountain, just a stone's throw from where I used to live in King's Cross. A Sydney landmark, this huge Coca-Cola sign was put up in 2018 to replace an older one, which was auctioned off letter by letter for charity. Taylor Square is one of the centres of Sydney's nightlife. There are many bars and nightclubs, as well as many restaurants and cafes. Sydney is brimming over with department, chain and international fashion stores and arcades. It's fantastic for a superb shopping experience. Sydney at night with a full moon is just about as good as it gets. And that was a look at Sydney. Let me know what you think of the video and I'll see you next time. In my next Australia video, I shall be taking the coastal path from Bondi Beach.